My name is Kathy with a C. Uh, we're going to be talking about some dark stuff today. Uh, but before we get into that, I would like to give a note to any moderators who are in the room. Um, any trolls just get banned straight out, and then we can just delete the comment after we ban them. Uh, we don't really have many trolls. Like, occasionally one pops up. No big deal. Um, but yeah, just uh, click their name, hide user from channel, then we can go back and delete whatever idiocy was left. <laughs> um, note to everyone else, I won't be reading chat until the end of what the information I'm about to do. And so if you have any questions, just hold them till the end. Typically the way we do this is that we will have this thing that I'm doing now. And then afterwards, after about 30 minutes to sometimes an hour, then we'll open it up and we just kind of hang and BS and answer questions and all that. But I wanted specifically, uh, oh, and before anybody asks, Jason's not here today. Um, he's sick. Uh, our whole town pretty much has got like a weird virus going around. Some people have got COVID. Some people have got the flu. It's a seasonal thing. And so he won't be here today, but he'll be on the next one. Um. I specifically wanted to do this subject because there's a lot of things that I can't, I can't say during my regular videos for a myriad of reasons. And that'll become kind of evident here in just a little bit. So there's a, there's a lot of dark sides to doing what I do. And a lot of it is like moral. Um, some of it is uh, guilt. A lot of it is frustrations. And it's, it's difficult to express on the videos that I'm doing because I don't want these types of stories that I'm about to tell to be associated directly with the video that I'm cleaning because it points out, it, it's basically just dirty laundry from, and, and you know who to associate that dirty laundry with, right? I, I don't want to ask somebody if I can clean their house and film it. And then they watch the video and it's just me talking about all the really dark stuff that's going on in their life. That's, that's just jerky, you know? Um, so I guess the, the first thing that's dark behind the scenes is, um, is more personal. It's frustrations. And it has to do with, like, if, for instance, one house, I, the woman wanted to turn two rooms into something different, a craft room or an office or something else. She was really adamant about wanting to be able to have a room where she can go in and do her crafting and her computer work and all that stuff. But she didn't want to get rid of any of the things that were in those rooms <clears throat> and it desperately needed it in order to turn those rooms into something else. It was impossible to make those rooms anything else than other than just junk storage. And she just couldn't get rid of it. And I told her, I can do that to those rooms today. I, in one day, I could turn that into a functional, beautiful craft room. In order to do that, I got to fill that dumpster. It's the only way. You have no other place to store this stuff. You're talking about stuff that you haven't even seen in five to ten years. That you can... It, there's a part of me that wants to tell them in a very smart aleck tone of voice, if you can name one thing in that room, I will keep everything. If you can name one thing that's under the, the top layer right there that's important to you, I will keep it. And in fact, I'll just sit down with them and make a list and say, write down every single thing in that room you want to keep. Because I guarantee they couldn't because they don't know what's in there. But the second they see it, then all of a sudden it's got purpose and it's got um i what's the word i'm looking for it's got potential that's the word they see potential in objects that don't have that it's never going to realize that potential and so they're like well i could make this thing out of this thing and it's like yeah but you're never going to do that one of the reasons you're not going to do it ironically is because you don't have access to the room in order to perform that thing you're wanting to do and so you end up getting that times a thousand because there's a thousand objects in the room and then they just can't seem to, they in their minds what they they're doing is i think they're thinking that if it just gets cleaned and restacked tighter 
then it'll open up enough space for them to do their other things. And it was extremely difficult, but that's like the least frustrating part of that house because now we're going to get into the morality of it. So in that house, there were hundreds and hundreds of uh, hypodermic needles because she was diabetic and they were open, no caps, just laying on the floor everywhere. And they were in the couch cushions, they were on the floor, they were under piles of garbage, they were on tables and countertops, and they were, um, they were just everywhere. I, if you laid them all out on a counter, there were closer to a thousand than there were 500. That's how many there were. So the morality comes in, not only is this a danger to her and her husband, but they did watch kids in that house. Their relatives dropped off their kids in the morning. They watched them for a few hours, and then the, par the parents of those kids picked them up. From a morality standpoint, I wanted to turn them in um, to DCFS. Um, in Illinois, I don't know if it's the same in every state, DCFS is a, a child and a family protection service. Um, there's a couple reasons I didn't. One, there was a sister involved who came from out of state in order to be there while we were doing the cleanup. And she was one of the ones who actually agreed with me about DCFS. The problem is in Illinois, when you're showing progress in a house, it's almost impossible to get somebody declared as incompetent. And so they see the progress happening. They're like, well, there, there are steps forward. We have, we're so overloaded with DCFS cases and adult protective cases that we can't bother with ones that, are, that there's progress happening in. However, I told the sister, I had a very real conversation with her and said, not only is, if this goes back to the way it was, if there's even one hypodermic needle left out after this and somebody doesn't catch it, not only will they go to jail for child endangerment and child neglect, the parents will also go to jail for child endangerment and child neglect because they know the condition of the house where they're dropping off their kids. And I'm like, the kids will absolutely be taken away on the spot. But like all, all of you will do jail time for this. Um, You'll be registered with the state for like child abuse. Um, and it's very difficult for me to not take that step further. Um, because also if I'm going into these houses and let's be honest, a lot of these houses could be reported and people could get in massive trouble for this. If I report these houses, then what I'm doing is I'm coming up, helping people out and then immediately punishing them and like uh, getting them kicked out of their house and then I get to the point to where I can no longer do this because nobody, everybody's going to see the video and be like, oh, no, no, no. This is the guy who turned people in. There's no way in hell I'm letting him into my house. They, they need help. They've asked for help. I'm going to help them. But I'm also going to tell somebody behind the scenes who I trust. If this gets back into this condition again, you have to tell somebody. Otherwise, you are liable for what happens. I'm like, you are now like an accessory to this. There's also an endangering the elderly law, not just kids, but like this woman was retired and her, like her kids could be, um, could like get some major consequences from neglect of the elderly. That is a law in Illinois. So that's only one of the frustrations and one of the dark things behind the scenes. I mean, in that same house, I could have genuinely filled a five gallon bucket full of mouse poop. And the hantavirus that goes with that is a real danger. The bacteria that comes with it. They had a bird that pooped everywhere and there is very, um, there's bacteria and viruses that are associated specifically with bird species. And that house was just a danger. I would declare it a biohazard. Um, and I think that any reasonable person from the state would have also. That's just the one house. It's just one of the things that I deal with behind the scenes that is very difficult for me to mentally cope with. And um, it's, it's exhausting physically. And I, 
you come back home and your every joint and every muscle on your body aches because you've been pack muling for a week solid. And then the the reality of what you just did starts to sink in and you you battle with yourself all the time and say, did I actually help them? Is it, um, is it exacerbating the problem? Uh, are, is it going to go back to the way it was? And are these kids in danger? Are these older people in danger? And you battle with that constantly. But all I can do in the end is say, okay, I did my thing. I went into a stranger's house and I cleaned up the danger. And from here on out, it's up to them and their family. You have to go live your life and forget these people exist. Because if I, if I dwell on it and I continue thinking about how bad this house was and what could be and what could have been, I would go crazy and I wouldn't, con I wouldn't be able to continue doing this. There's no way. It's why I'm not even gonna call this person out. You know the cleaning channel I'm talking about who's extraordinarily happy to clean up these, this dirt. Um, I guarantee she needs therapy behind the scenes. So anyway, I'm, I'm not going to harp on her, but, <laughs> um, so some of the other dark stuff that happens is it, it often deals with things that I can't bring up on video. So I did a house where it was very obvious the woman was on meth. If not meth, it was Oxy or it was Vicodin. It was, she was absolutely uh, addicted to stimulants. And when you go in there, the, the house smells like ammonia, but it has nothing to do with cats. Um, if you live in an area like mine that's infested to drug use, you'll know what that smell is. So... Because of her drug use, basically she slept all day. Then she got up and then did nothing. And then she was, she's perfectly able-bodied. Um, but then she just lets the house go to hell. She has a teenage daughter who lives there. And the teenage daughter had had enough. But she is, um, she's used to this lifestyle. And so when you go into the teenager's room, it is as bad as the rest of the house because nobody had ever taught her how to do this stuff. And that part of the moral conflict is difficult for me. Um, hold on one second. I'm going to minimize this real quick and bring it back up. Sometimes Samsung is weird about volume and sometimes I have to minimize stuff. Okay. Hopefully this does the trick, but so anyway, it was a house that I had spent two days on an extraordinary amount of effort and she just didn't care. Like she wanted me to come in and clean her house. And then she was almost disappointed that I didn't clean her yard. And she just like, I, I would contact her and say, Hey, I'm going to be there next Saturday at 10 or 11 AM or whatever it is. Um, and then I would get no response. And it made me mad because it's like somebody had gotten a hold of me and heard about the help that I do. And it was just like it came across to me as, oh, great, I don't have to pay a housekeeper to clean up my hoard. And then just left and no communication at all. And I don't, I don't need people to do backflips. I don't even really need people to thank me. I don't, I don't do this for like admiration. But I do want to at least be somewhat appreciated. And in most cases, I am. In, in almost every case, I'd say nine out of 10 cases, people are very appreciative of the things that I do. But there are occasionally people who are just like, like, okay, you're all set. You've got this room back that you wanted. Here's what I did with your pots and pans. Here's what I did with your kitchen and blah, blah, blah. And they're like, all righty. And then I, I just leave and that's the last I ever hear of them. They just go about their business like this was a thing. Um, I, I get that maybe one out of every 10 houses that I do. And that's a little frustrating. The other part has not really much to do with the actual cleaning. Sorry, I bumped my camera. It's to do with, so right now, before, before I get into this, one year ago today, 
we crossed 10,000 subscribers, exactly 10,000 subscribers one year ago to the day. We are getting ready to uh, cross 300,000 right now. And on TikTok, we're approaching 270,000, 280,000. So thank you from the bottom of my heart, genuinely, thank you so much for subscribing because that's, I don't know, it makes it feel like it's worthwhile and we're doing something special. So genuinely, thank you. Um, not genuinely, you can all go to hell. Um, you can suck my butt. Anyway, um, there's a reason I mentioned that. The reason I mention it is because when you've got a combined audience of say 600,000 subscribers and followers between here and TikTok, that's just the people who hit the subscribe and follow button. We are approaching 25 million views on YouTube right now. So 25 million people have watched these videos. That's not counting TikTok. When you have that much of an audience, um, you deal with daily anywhere from 20 to 100 people asking um, if you can help them. They never say where they're from, so I always have to follow it up with where are you from, and then it'll turn out they're from like Pennsylvania or California or whatever, and it's, there's just no way I can do it. And I want to. Um, I desperately want to help these people. I see their stories and they're heartbreaking. But then I also get a lot of people who are like, hey, do you know anybody in the area, in my area of, say, Sacramento, California, who does what you do? And then I have to explain to them, I only know like four people in the world who do what I do. And like one of them is in Finland, one of them is in New York, and one's in Utah. And the amount of people who do what we do is like, they're almost non-existent. So it's weird. It's like... It's like the joke, I used to have a friend who was from Mexico, and the joke we used to make to him all the time was, hey, I saw a guy from Mexico today, do you know him? And it, it, he thought it was funny, so I, <laughs> but, um, but it's the same thing. We, we get that here a lot, where it's like, hey, I'm, I'm in uh, Portland, Oregon, do you know anybody who does what you do in this area? And it's like, no, man, I only know like four people in the world who do what I do, and they're nowhere near you. But you can't just, I can't force myself to just not answer. And um, a large part of what I do per day is spending hours on social media, answering DMs and um, messages on Messenger and having to explain to people that I don't have the time or the resources to travel across the country to do this. And it's, it's mentally exhausting and emotionally exhausting, especially when they're like, look, I can pay for it. And I have to explain, it's not about the money. It's about the time. Like every, all the time that I spend there, um, a, a, a large majority of that is going to be spent in a hotel and traveling to and from and actually getting there and getting back. And it destroys like my business whenever I'm gone. And it's, um, th there's going to be a point where I can start traveling, but like on this last video that I did the correct collaboration with Bonnie and Barbie, not counting the gifts that I gave them, I spent around $3,000 to do that cleanup. I will not recoup that money on YouTube. Uh, that video will not make $3,000. And that was with hotel. I took care of all the food and I'm not complaining about that. Don't get me wrong here. I'm just giving you some background of what it takes to do this stuff. Um, I, I don't regret spending that much for one second because I got to meet my two favorite cleaners in the world. We got to work together. I got to make two friends for life. And then we also got to help that woman who, uh, Canadian bacon. Thank you. Um, but I, I got to help that woman who was in way over her head and was about to lose her marriage because of it. She was about to kick her husband out and say, that's it. Um, so I don't regret it, but it's, it did cost three grand. Um, I, I don't know how I can pull that off cross country. I mean, given I'm not going to have two other people with me to do hotel rooms and food and all that stuff for four days. So, I mean, you can, 
even if you take a third of that, it's a thousand dollars just in hotels and food for me and my wife. And then you have to count travel expenses and you have to um, count uh, time getting there and, you know, figuring everything out. You're eating out every day of the week. And so um, you're gaining weight because all the fast food is there within reach and it's easy. Or you can go to a healthier restaurant and pay three times as much. Anyway, um, there's more to it than free cleaning. So I, I get these comments from people who have a weird perspective where they're like, well, it's, you're not cleaning for free. You get paid from YouTube. And I'm like, that's not what I mean by free cleaning. I mean the person that who would have spent $10,000 plus in order to clean this house didn't have to pay a dime. And it's like, even though YouTube is paying me, they are, and they're, they're paying me well. They don't pay me enough to cover $3,000 worth of expenses. So um, having that mentality come at you almost daily is exhausting. And you don't have time to explain it to people. And because there's so many people like, you know, trying to contact you. And I, I attempt to answer as many as I can, but it's impossible. I would sit here all day from the time I woke up till the time I go to bed, just answering questions, the same question over and over. I'm not going to get a social media person. If you get a response from me, it's from me. Um, that's part of the job. It's part of the deal for me. I, if, if you're in my community, I want you in my community. Um, I am likely going to start a discord today, by the way, so that we can talk about stuff like this and so that I can go over things um, and have some of the moderators help me explain things to people who I've already, you know, um, explain the same premise to. Uh, but if I do that, I'll put that in the community tab. But anyway, we're getting off to topic. One second. Trish, thank you. Welcome to our weird cult, and Susan as well. Mm, T. Dark Lord, that's a great name. Thank you for the 20. Also, I'm going to vape right on camera, right in your face. You just got vaped, son. <laughs> I'm going to laugh like that from now on in real life. So some of the other dark stuff that happens is you get stories that are, you get stories that are too dark to put on YouTube. And even if I could put them on YouTube, I don't want, people associating those stories with those specific videos, because even though you'll never know who they are, they will. And they've got friends who may see this video and they will know that there's an association there. But I get lots and lots of people who behind the scenes are hardcore addicted to a myriad of things. A lot of times it's alcohol, but I mean, sometimes a lot of times it's also pills. Um, you get people who have gone through hardcore physical and emotional abuse their entire life. Royal one, thank you. Um, and the, the hoarding becomes much more understandable when you realize what these people have been through. And you don't, you don't want to just throw that out there on, on the video itself. It's their story for them to tell. And the fact that they trusted me with that information um, makes me value and respect that trust in order to, um, to keep them sane, to keep them protected. But some of these things, man, I've seen people who have just gone freak of nature and sharing, thank you, who have um, who've gone through some shit, who have gone through some violent crazy abusive stuff and it directly leads to their hoarding and it becomes so much more understandable when you're going through this holy crap sharon thank you and the thing is like it one of the reasons i'd like to clean when there's nobody there though i do it both ways um with them there and with them not there but 
once they open up, they want to continue talking about it because it's like a, it's like a geyser. Like once it hits that pressure point and it explodes, everything comes out and they have trusted you enough with their story that now they're going to go deep into it and you become like their therapist, like their sort of makeshift bartender therapist. And I do know, um, farty butts, boo, thank you. Um, I, I do know some about, I am educated in therapy to a certain extent. I am human enough to want to listen and that's really all a lot of them want, but also I'm trying to clean quickly and I'm autistic and so I don't know how to react. Donna, thank you. Um, and it's very difficult for me to know how to humanely react to a lot of the stories that I'm hearing. But I, when you are a person who's doing a job and you constantly get people's problems and um, you constantly get their depression and their anxiety um, and you become the the target, the dumping ground on that, um, it gets, it can be overwhelming. I think Daniel just showed up. One second, give me like 30 seconds real quick. Is that Daniel? on tomorrow possibly mm -hmm. uh, we're going to go over some schedule stuff and i'm going to switch some stuff around here's not dave girl hey guys how you doing are you out of trouble we're talking about <laughs> dark stuff dark stuff yeah Ooh. yeah about all the dark stuff that happens when you're cleaning for free and about the addictions you find and the mm -hmm. abuse and the mental health yeah and all that. Yeah, yeah it can get overwhelming yeah it's tough it really yeah. is it really is um but i will I'll text you a little bit later. Um, I don't know if I'm going to do that tomorrow or if I'm going to do it toward the end of the week, but we're going to do some scheduling stuff and prepare for Adri to exit and, mm -hmm. and all that stuff. So Okay. Sounds good. All right. Y'all be safe. Later. Later, Dakota. Come on, fuzz butt. Yeah. Okay. Um... On the last video that I did, the very last one, the collaboration, she came down and said, you can tell this story if you'd like. I'm going to be cussing here in a minute, and it's going to be a hardcore F-bomb. So just, just so you know, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Thank you, Ellie. Elephant. <laughs> um, so what happened was she came down and said, you can tell this story. And um, so what happened was five years ago, she and her best friend cleaned the house from top to bottom. And so she, they got rid of all the old stuff. They got rid, they got the house in working order. And the guy, she said every day for the past five years, he will work himself up when looking for one of his old things and say that fucking woman took everything from me. And then get to the point where he works out, he gets himself so worked up, he's screaming it. The guy's originally from India. Um, he grew up in a literal hut. And whenever he got to the U.S., he started making a good living and then eventually became wealthy. And he is terrified that one day this is all going to disappear. And not only that, I think they both believe that there is going to be an apocalypse in their lifetime and that they want to be prepared for it. And so not only are you getting rid of his stuff and he's got a severe mental illness, but to him, you're also getting rid of his safety net, of his um, health. What are you doing? You don't belong in here. You stay outside. And so to, to him, you're actively putting him in danger by doing this. And let's not say this is all him. The, the, the wife has some issues too, but the hers is fractional compared to his. It's hers is, is odd stuff, excuse me, like vitamins and medication. She has health issues. Um, there are specific like blue jars that she likes to collect. She didn't want to get rid of any of the food from the basement. I mean, she was good with... Um, 
getting rid of expired food, but she, I think there's a food issue in the house to where she's just, she doesn't want to get rid of it. So she does have some hoarding tendencies, but no, nowhere near what the husband has got. And so it's easy from our perspective to say, well, just divorce him. <clears throat> well, they've got two kids. They've got a relationship. They've got this one thing that is a massive issue between the two. <clears throat> but as far as I know, it's the only issue. It's do you divorce your your partner because they have a mental health issue? I mean, it's it's easy to say from an outside eye. Well, I would just divorce him. Well, you probably wouldn't. And I know a lot of of uh, people in w way worse situations where like even abuse and everything is happening in, in other situations and the people stay together because they don't know how to leave or they don't know how to fix it. or And so I, I never like when somebody offers up an extremely simple solution that is taken to an extreme. And so, uh, for instance, in whenever I'm doing a kitchen and people are like, why'd you even clean that? Just gut it. And it's like, you can't just gut it because then you have to just rebuild it. And you have to spend, I can spend 13 hours cleaning the kitchen. You'll spend two weeks to a month gutting and rebuilding a kitchen. And you'll drop a minimum of $30,000 for a mid-range kitchen. Like it's not a just thing. And I, I hate that word whenever people are <clears throat> offering solutions, which brings me to another kind of dark thing behind the scenes is I get the just comment a lot. And they're like, if I would have gone in there, I would have done this and this and this. And I, it almost makes me mad because my response, and sometimes I do respond this, is to be fair, you wouldn't have gone in there at all. You wouldn't have helped. You wouldn't have, you wouldn't have walked into this house. You would have smelled it from the outside of the house and said, F this and gone. And no one would have blamed you. But you get the kind of know-it-all people who are like, what I would have done instead is... And it's like, or you could have just did what I did, or even better, go help someone who needs it, who's in this same situation, record it and upload it and show me what you would have done. Don't tell me what you would have done. Do it and show me. Because at a bare minimum, if I'm wrong and you're doing it better, I will adopt that thing. And at a bare minimum, even if you're wrong and you're not doing it better, somebody just got helped. You know, you got a human who was humanized and treated humanely by you. And that is, that's priceless to me. And so it's difficult to deal with that. If it's just one or two people, it's no big deal. But what I deal with is not that. What I deal with is 50 people a day, 100 people a day, thousands per week. And it's, you get inundated on it, not just here, but on TikTok and on your Facebook account and your Instagram account. And you get, um, it, it's very difficult. Uh, just so you're aware, if you didn't know it, um, anybody who victim blames on my channel gets auto banned. Anybody who calls the people lazy, um, anybody who thinks in a childlike manner, who can't empathize even a little bit, I just don't allow them into my channel. So, um, just so you're aware, if you've, um, ever disappeared from my main channel, that's why I'm not a jerk about it. I just don't, I don't have time to explain it to everybody, but, um, I am going to start answering a few questions. Give me a second. Um, because I, a, a lot of people are asking, have I heard back from the husband? No, he is in India right now and he won't be home for at least two to three weeks. Um, and he knows this is happening. This was not done behind his back. He was told very, very clearly, this house is going to be cleaned up. You do not have a choice about it. If you don't want the stuff to go, let me know now and we will divorce on the spot. Otherwise, if the house isn't cleaned up, we're absolutely divorcing and you're going your separate ways because they had done this, um, four times in the past. And so, um, this was his rock bottom. And in almost every case, uh, the, the rock bottom is the only way they get started. It's the only way they fix. It's the same with addiction and it's the same with hoarding. And this is his rock bottom. Um, he's not going to react well to it. He thinks of this as a punishment 
and he thinks of this as um, an assault on his lifestyle and his life. He thinks that this is harming his family because we're taking away his prep or a lot of his prep. Um, he's going to think that we're harming his business because we got rid of a lot of tools and odds and ends that he didn't really need. Um, but to him, he did. There would there would be potential for his use in the 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 later. Um, so it it is frustrating. Somebody asked it, you know, just right now. Dory asked, "Does it frustrate you to work so hard to just to see it go back the same way?" One, I disassociate myself with those cleanings after I leave, so I'll never see them again. Likely, there may be some that I go back to, but it's very rare. But two. I fully expect them to go back to that. The relapse rate on hoarding is almost the same as alcoholism. It's about 90% relapse rate because this is not an issue that's fixed by cleaning. It's an issue that is managed by therapy and repetition and life coaching and um, behavioral therapy, cognitive behavioral therapy. And so it likely is going to go back to that condition, but my thing is while i'm there i'm getting them out of a dangerous situation now and i'm giving them a clean slate now and i let them know this is going to take therapy this is going to take uh, an immense amount of practice and um you're going to have to get involved like if your husband is hoarding you're going to have to get involved and just take stuff out and you know bring it up before it gets out of hand. And a lot of people aren't ready for that conflict. That's, a, that's usually why you have one person who hoards and the other person who tolerates. They're very bad at conflict. And you, when they, they confront a hoarder about their hoarding, the hoarder often responds almost violently, um, not like fist punching <laughs> and, and spin kicking, but they get extremely angry. They'll start screaming. They'll um, get almost abusive because it's their fight or flight response kicking in. And so um, a lot of times instead of flight, which happens a lot, they'll be like, well, I, I don't know what I'm doing either. So I'll just leave and you take care of it. You'll get that passive aggressive thing. When it's not a flight in that response, it'll be fight, which is screaming and arguing and just bullying people until they back down and let them get their way. That is the mental Ill, that is the mental illness steering the ship. That's that taking over and protecting itself. Um, and that's difficult to deal with. Most people can't. Even in a marriage, they're like a, they can't go the, the, the final step of divorce because that's a massive thing to do. And that may be the only part of their life where they have issue is the hoarding or whatever. And in every other facet, they're you know, a good father, a good mother, they take care of each other, they make money, they, you know, um, and so it's not, it's not as simple as just divorce and move on, though that is, you know, the, the, that is the condition under this last house that I did, so, um, I'm going to, let me hit my vape real quick and I'm going to start answering questions, but I mean, you get the idea. It's not, this is not a case of like showing up to somebody's house and being like, it's all smiles and happiness and I can't wait to help you. And then thank you for the help. This looks so much better. I've turned over a new leaf. Like it's not like that. I mean, Ari Conarina, Dark Lord, thank you. Um, <laughs> had blue pants and a bright yellow top on. Yeah, that's my, uh, my yellow top, I bear, I rarely wear that thing, but so anyway, um, let me hit my vape real quick. Got a lot of new members today. Welcome in. Oh yeah. So, so back to Ari. I want to see Ari do an actual hoarder house in the U.S. So far, I've never seen her do an actual hoarder house. It's all been ADHD and depression cleaning. They all, it's stuff where she can shovel it up and throw away everything. And 
in the United States, I think she's going to run into a lot more hoarder stuff to where she it, she can't throw that stuff away. The the owner's not going to let her. And I think she purposely takes houses that allow her to throw the things away because I'm not sure she can deal with what, say, Barbie and Bonnie and myself deal with. Uh, Bonnie is from a beautiful mess. Um, Barbie is clean with Barbie, both brilliant channels. Uh, if you like what I do, you like what they do. Um, but yeah, I don't think Ari could do what we do. Um, she's, she's able to get rid of just a massive amount of trash and she's never been in a position where she's had to keep the stuff, but she's so big that she can pick and choose her houses a little bit better. And so, yes, I see you. Um, I'm not looking at, at chat a lot right now. I'm still talking about the live. I'll take questions here in a minute. Um, but she deals with things that are like tile and she deals with floors that can be soaked in um, like bathrooms that have drainage and, you know, she can actually wet down the whole bathroom floor and all that stuff. Um, she's not really dealt with a lot of stuff that is like American homes have a lot of carpet and, you know, so I'm not knocking Ari. I like Ari. I watch all of her videos, but what she does is extremely different from what we do. And, um, she deals with a lot of darkness, but she also, I believe makes it a requirement that that person not be there because I've never really seen a video where the person's there. And I think one of the reasons is because it allows her to do her thing without interruption and it allows her to do her things without getting locked into a therapy session with the owner. And so ours is different. We, we may or may not have the person there. We have a massively different type of cleaning than, than her. So, um, yeah, I don't know. It's so whenever, I guess one of the reasons I say that is because on, uh, Barbie's channel, she often has trolls that are like, you're just copying Ari Katarina. And I keep telling Barbie, do not respond. Do not make a video about that. Do not do, cold dead silence and ban them automatic. Eventually they'll run out of accounts to make and you will never hear from them again. Ban them. You, you are so different than Ari Katarina um, in what you do versus what she does. It's like the difference between watching a Pixar movie and watching a Quentin Tarantino film. Um, you know, and you know which one's which. <laughs> so anyway, um, yeah, it's, I'm not saying all this stuff on this live to complain. And I'm not saying it to vent. I'm just saying it because there are not a lot of YouTube channels, one, that do what I do at all. Um, but two, they don't show behind the scenes and what they have to deal with in the background. You know, they, they don't show the behind the scenes because they, they can't really. And I think people get a skewed perspective of what it's like um, to do what we do. Um, because we're not showing you the, the really dark stuff. But... Brenda, thank you. The shoes match kind of. Um, the shoes match in that they, I wear my blue ones, my blue Nikes, and the dark blue on my shoes matches the dark blue on this. So... So that dark blue matches this dark blue. Oh. Okay, I'm now looking at chat. <laughs> Sorry. And you'll have to pardon me because this stuff goes up quick. We got like, uh, we're pushing 1,300 people in the room right now. So, um, the chat goes by kind of quickly. Dying to see the whole fit. I'm just wearing blue jeans and stuff. Here, I, in fact, I got a request for you. Hold on. This is going to be backwards on here. But this is uh, America's Groove Record Store. If you guys could... I'm going to ask you a favor. On Instagram, you can look up America's Groove. And um, it's a record store out of a town. And this is a real town name, Effingham. 
and it's owned by a good friend of mine named Aaron. And he knows that this channel's big, but I'm not sure he knows how big. And so if you could go into his Instagram, again, America's Groove Record Store on Instagram, and just put, I don't know, hi from Midwest Magic Cleaning in a heart or something. Just, uh, just I came here from Midwest Magic Cleaning or whatever, just so he knows that where you're all coming from. I think he would crap <laughs> so, <laughs> when he saw like how many people come into his Instagram to say hi from me. I mean, I can just li literally just drive over there and say hi. Um, but just seeing it on online would be funny to me because I'm weird. So suck it. How many members do I have now? We're last time I checked, we were at 800. Um, but we've had a lot joined today. My goal is to get up to a thousand because once we get to a thousand, that basically pays Jason's salary. Um, the members would be directly responsible for, or not responsible for, but um, yeah, it, it, it takes care of Jason's salary. So I don't have to worry about the business covering his payment um, because the business kind of fluctuates. Uh, lately, I've been paying money into the business instead of earning uh, a living from it. Shirasima, that's a cool name. Thank you. America's Groove from Scotland. He'll love that. He's a really cool guy. He is like the most laid back. His name is Aaron, and he's the most laid back guy you'll ever meet and super weird. Uh, how's the car? It is so nice. For those who don't know, uh, for the I am 49 years old. Um, for almost 50 years, I have always wanted a very nice car. I've never had one in my life, ever. Um, and I told my wife 10 years ago that before I hit age 50, um, I am going to own a midlife crisis car. I either want a sports car that no one else has. I don't want like a Mustang or a Charger because everybody in my area has one of those. Or I want a luxury SUV, one of the two. And I finally pulled the trigger on it. We went to uh, the next town over in order to get some luggage for the collaboration. And um, while we were over there, I was like, I want to stop into this car lot that I like just to kind of put feelers out for um, to see what I'm going to be spending and what they have on the lot and what they can get. And I happened to run into my dream car. They were able to take a trade in for a down payment on the car I was driving, which I had fortunately paid off like a few weeks before then. And um, since they were able to take that as a down payment, I just got it. And I got a 2023 Camaro SS convertible with um, less than a thousand miles on it. And it is a mean car. It is absolutely beautiful. And I, the whole time that I was doing the paperwork and stuff, I just kept doing this. I just kept going, I can't believe I'm doing this. You're an idiot. You're an idiot. Stop doing this. Put a stop to it now. And then after I finally got all of the paperwork done and I got the car and we drove off in it, um, I've been excited ever since. I'm so glad I did it. Uh, but yeah, it's, I don't know, it's it's beautiful. It's mean. It's got a 6.2 liter V8 in it. You can put the car into four different modes that changes the way the engine behaves and the suspension and all that. And you can change the sound of the engine. So I can put it in stealth mode that will muffle the sound so it doesn't rumble your neighbor's house. Or I can put it in track mode, which will be full open exhaust and it gives that mean muscle car sound. But it is, I'm so happy um, with it, and I'm glad I did it. I mean, that's basically my splurge for the rest of my life, but uh, because it's not, it wasn't cheap. It was, it's a sports car. It's basically the American Ferrari. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Aaron's going to crap whenever he sees all the, uh, in fact, I can take you to see the car. It's in the garage right now. Here, let me pull you off of my stand. I'll just take you out of the garage real quick, and then we'll come back in the office. Look at my beard. It's fluffy. I got some fluffy beard. Let me 
flip this around so you can see Dakota too. Dakota, say hi. What are you doing? There's my car. It's a Dakota 6.2 liter. light and back up a little bit come have to do it for the door god i need to clean this door i want to get in there and turn it on so you can hear what it sounds like also my garage is a mess so oh man i don't have my key in here crap i guess i'm not turning it on uh, yeah, never mind. I'll turn it on another time. But it is beauty, miss. Okay, go back in here. What are you doing, Ted Nugent? Ted Nugent. Usually she barks when I do that. Hey, Dakota. Dakota. Good girl. <laughs> what? Ted Nugent. Ted Nugent. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Ted Nugent. Frank. Yeah. Ah. Beans. I don't know where Dusty is. This has basically been my dinner for the past two days. I've had the house to myself. And so I just, there was twice that much just random snacks. So yesterday, instead of cooking, I just ate beef jerky all day. All right. Put you guys back on the stand. Back on the... There we go. So yeah, um, I've already got another house lined up. I was gonna do that tomorrow, but I wanna do it Wednesday and Thursday instead. And this should be a pretty good one because it's all organization. It's not crazy dirty. Uh, in fact, it's kept really clean, but it is um, massively cluttered. And so, and it's, I wouldn't even say it's hoarded. I think it's a case of overspending, possibly compulsive spending. And it's going to be difficult because I'm going to have to do a lot of house Tetris. Um, but I'm going to be doing that Wednesday, Thursday, and that'll be out this um, Friday or Saturday. Yeah, shirts from America's Groove. Uh, he used to have an online division, um, but it got to be too much because his video or his video, his record store kind of blew up locally. And so it, he doesn't have the time or the resources to do online sales. But if he did, his shirt collection he's got is crazy awesome and is hilarious. And he's got a lot of like, 1980s uh, video shirts, um, horror movie shirts, and vintage shirts from like the 50s, 60s, 70s. He's just got really, really cool stuff in there. I mean, on top of the awesome vinyl, but not a sneak vape. Um, so Barbie's version of the collaboration is already up and Bonnie's will be up um, next Saturday. She's working on it this week and that'll be up next Saturday. Oh, speaking of which, um, is it internet? That's a cool name. Um, we're working on another couple new shirts because it's been a while since we updated the shirt store and came up with new ones. So 
We will be updating that hopefully this week. Emily's at a music festival and she won't be home until tonight. And then within the next couple of days, she's going to Minneapolis to visit her family. So she'll be gone for at least another week or two. Um, and she's the one who does the designs for the shirt. I basically tell her what I want and then she designs it. Um, I can design those myself, but I just don't have the time to. And so, um, yeah, anyway, it's, we'll, we'll have some new ones up soon. I'm, I'm definitely doing the one with the formula for the APC on it where it's a spray bottle. And then I've got marked off where to put the alcohol and how much water and all that. Um, so that, that should be out soon. And then I want to do <clears throat> a couple of dumb, funny ones too, but <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> Barbie, um, the most shocking thing about her, besides the fact she's five feet, she's a tiny little thing, um, is that she can carry her weight in stuff. So she was grabbing like, I mean, she can't be a hundred pounds. She's so small. Um, but she was grabbing like chairs and end tables that were her weight and carrying them out. No problem. She is a freaking workhorse. The license plate on the Camaro. I'm going to, I, I'm not even going to say what I want. I want to do personalized plates, but I, I, that would be dumb to say that on here, but it's going to be, it's going to be dumb. Yeah, Barbie is absolutely a powerhouse. She's, it was crazy how much stuff she was able to lift. I was giving her crap when we were on the uh, mantelpiece above the fireplace and she, she got a, like a little stool to stand up on and then I'm pulling stuff off right beside her and I was like, I don't understand. I'm, I'm able to get this stuff just fine. I, I don't know what your problem is, um, but I, I'm able to pull all this stuff off, no big deal. <clears throat> I need to quit vaping. That's what's making me have to clear my throat because it's just like a collection of sugar. <laughs> I, I really wish we could have spent more time together. She's one of my favorite people and one of my best friends. I originally messaged her like a year and a half ago and got to talking to her a little bit on DMs, or not DMs, but comments on her uh, videos. Then we got um, to talking on Facebook and Facebook Messenger, and then we just, over time, became really good friends. Um, and it sucks that she's gonna go back to Spain, but she also wanted to, or not back to Spain, to Spain for the first time, but she also invited me over there. So at some point I will end up getting a passport and going to Spain to clean over in Europe, which will be pretty cool. Ramonda, thank you. Stealth vape in plain sight, that's exactly right. I'm stealth vaping so hard you can see it. Wait, that's a failure, that's not a stealth vape. That's failing at stealth vaping. <laughs> Glued with gold, thank you. Yeah, being diagnosed with autism was a life changer in a weird way. It just kind of put, I don't know, a reason behind why I act the way I act and I think the way I think. And so it made it, I felt less weird and more normal once I got the, uh, um, the diagnosis. Yeah, Cindy, Barbie is five feet tall and Bonnie's not much taller. Oh, thank you. The setup, that's a Starforge Creator Elite. I had to get a beast in order to uh, um, process the, the, the amount of videos that I do because I do 4K videos um, that bounce between 30 frames and 60 frames per second, and they're often long, so I need something that can handle processing time. So my previous computer would process one of my videos in about six hours, this one does it in about 20 minutes. Anything short, like a 10 minute or less, I can process it in like six to eight minutes. Yeah, vaping's not ideal, but I, I quit smoking um, several years ago and I had had like a, I don't even know, I started smoking when I was 13 and I quit smoking a few years ago. So this was the only thing 
um, that got me out of it. I'm down to the lowest amount of nicotine they make for these two. So I'm just one step away from going to no nicotine and then just giving it up. So I'm getting there. Uh, Denise, I have a friend um, on TikTok who's a woman who's six foot four. She's my height. I like to meet her and then just dunk on her. <laughs> oh, Mags, that's awesome. Yeah, quitting smoking was the, one of the hardest things I've ever done. Uh, Linda, we have been talking about Barbie's fake channels um, for a bit. This is the first time she's really had to deal with it. And I told her the only thing you can do is go on Facebook or Instagram or wherever the fake accounts are, report them, fill out the forms. They're an annoying pain in the ass. It takes forever. Um, but I said, this is kind of the price of fame and it's only gonna get worse the more popular you get. So right now I've got around, I don't even know, 20 different channels who just rip my stuff off. Um, uh, what's that one, Crafty Panda or something like that? just flat out steals my stuff and they are um they've got millions of followers i just reported a page right now or yesterday that has almost a hundred thousand followers and it's just nothing but not only stolen videos but they steal my avatar they post pictures of you know me for my facebook page and the only thing you can do is report them and facebook does not care they are the most garbage site in the universe and unfortunately, I need it for my business. Otherwise, I wouldn't have a Facebook page. How many sneak vapes did I do at the big house? I would take, so when I'm cleaning, I don't vape near as much. I basically work until I need a break. Then I go outside and hit my vape a few times and relax. And then I put it down and go back to cleaning and don't touch it again. So I take more breaks than most people because I'm the pack mule most of the time. So while Barbie and Bonnie were doing their things, I was going up and down basement stairs carrying um, on average around 80 pounds in a garbage bag. And on the high end, um, I carried some of those out that were 200 pounds easy. And going up and down those stairs, lugging 200 pounds on your back was exceptionally difficult. It wore me out. Um, but then, so I would take a break like every 20 or 30 minutes and then just sit outside and drink some Arizona tea and, uh, and hit my vape. If I steal, if they steal my avatar, how, um, can you tell it's fake? Well, that's the problem. Um, I only have two Facebook pages. I've got the one that's my personal, and then I've got one that's Midwest magic cleaning. That's got, um, that I have linked here on my YouTube channel on the about section. Anything else is fake. I will only link, I will link any of my social media stuff on my about page and that's where I've had it forever. If you find a page that claims to be me and it's not linked on my um, about page on YouTube, then it's not me. And the problem with that is that these people trick people into thinking that they're me and then they talk to them over DMs and try to get things like their phone number and their address and they'll ask them for money. And it's like, I will, I will never ask people for money. I don't want your phone number. I don't want your address. I don't want anything like that. And, but people, some people are too gullible and think that it's actually me and that they're making friends. And um, it's just, it's difficult because at that point, they're just going to rip them off. And again, Facebook doesn't do worth a crap on cracking down on those things. I reported um, yesterday over 200 videos that were stolen. Have I ever looked at a potential hoarder home to clean and decided it was just too much to do? Not yet, but um, had Bonnie and Barbie not been on this last collaboration, I probably would have had to have done that with this one. If it was just me doing this, um, without them collaborating, I wouldn't have been able to do more than one room. 
it would have taken me three days just to do the kitchen or three days just to do the basement and I would have gotten nothing else done. And so um, that one would have been a case of me driving up two hours to this house, walking inside, looking around and saying, I'm sorry, I can't do this. How can you get into the cleaning business? Um, I'm glad you asked that because that was something I was going to talk about earlier. Um, what I did was I started local and started with people I knew, kind of. And then I, I started cleaning some houses for free just so I can get some before and after pictures and to kind of hone my skills. And what I did was I started a Facebook page weeks in advance and started posting before and after pictures. And not just that, but actual posts about how my life was going, pictures of my dog. And because nobody's gonna, nobody wants to join a Facebook page that's just a billboard and a commercial for your business. But I knew I needed the Facebook page in order to get customers. So what I did was I waited a few weeks until I had a whole bunch of pictures and before and afters built up. And then I posted on that and I boosted uh, for $100. I boosted a post that explained what I was doing and that I was taking on new customers and showed the before and afters on that post. And then when you boost a post, you can tell it the area you want to target. So that one I targeted everybody over the age of say 25 in a 30 mile radius from my house. And then after that, that starts showing up on local people's Facebook groups. And then they start messaging me and I started gaining customers that way. I have not had to boost a post since then, but if I needed to fill out, say, 10, 15, 20 customers, that's how I do it now, is I'd make another post, I would um, uh, boost it in that 30 mile radius, and then I would gain my 10 or 20 or whatever customers I needed, and then um, I, would, I would just not boost again until I needed to do it. But, What's the craziest, coolest thing I've uncovered in a hoarded home? A wedding picture from the late 1800s, I think. Um, and all the hypodermic needles, that was pretty crazy. So in this last house, we uncovered a couple of picture frames, and I mentioned this on the video. Um, if the frames are real, they will be worth anywhere from $20,000 to $60,000 each. If they're not real, they're still worth a few hundred, but um, it wasn't really the money. I mean, it is the money that was interesting if it's worth that much, but it is more that the frames were extraordinarily cool. Um, hi, Emily. I told you I'm on a live. Please don't message me or I will elbow you right in the face. Um, so yeah, um, well, we found all kinds of really cool stuff. I, um, actually guys, I'm sorry. It's, it's a little over an hour. I've actually got some messages coming in. I have to respond to, uh, one of them was from my son, uh, not an emergency or anything, but I, I do have to answer these and that's probably my karmic sign to say I should probably shut down. Anyway, thank you for being on the Monday live. Um, I will have the members only video up on Wednesday and I should have the regular weekend video up either on Friday or Saturday. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. We're closing in on 300,000 subscribers. That's nuts. That's D's nuts is what that is. But all right, guys, thank you for coming in. I will see you uh, this Wednesday or Saturday or next Monday. Later.